So David, uh, a lot of farmers in Western Canada are obviously very interested in what the weather is going to potentially be like this spring, especially after last year. Uh, last year would be called uh, kind of in many areas a weather disaster in terms of farming. What What is your forecast telling us for the spring? Well, I mean, uh, it's I wouldn't. Uh, it's almost like two strikes against you already because of the fact that you've started off with this, all this snow and you've got to get rid of it. Now, our models are showing um, for the the spring period, the next month, uh, the late last part of winter to the early part of spring, is um, we're showing normal conditions. You know, if if I was if I was manufacturing weather for a yeah. farmer, in our models, we have three possibilities in our models. You say warmer, colder, or normal, something in between. I mean, you've got to have three. Right. Everybody thinks, well, it's either going to be warmer or colder, but hey, it can be in between, you yeah. say. And that's good. I mean, I would always manufacture normal weather. It's what, our, it's what we expect for this time of the year. Now, our initial models are showing for the spring period a slower, a cooler than normal spring. So what that means is that clearly farmers are not going to be on their fields as early as they were last year. Right. That, I think, is, is given. Um, and maybe that's good because it's going to give it a little time to to get rid of that uh, excess. But you know, it's a wild it's a wild shoot. I mean, if you get some Paul Bunyan snowfalls there in uh, uh, in, in April May, because we can get heavy snowfalls. Oh, in listen! May. I mean, I, I say to people, you know, one of the toughest things about Western Canada is that um, where the rest of us in Canada are saying adieu to winter, your snowfall season often begins. Because, you know, and let me tease you with a little bit of trivia. I mean, I often say to people in Calgary, I say, which month of the year do you get your heaviest dumps of snow? Your 20 centimeters. I mean, the stuff that would cause you to book a hotel room yeah, overnight. You yeah. say, school's closed. Exactly. Yeah. 20 centimeters so, and they say, well, is it February? And they say, no, maybe it's probably March. It's May. Yeah. I mean, when you look over the records, there's more of these big suckers that fall in May. And the good news, of course, is it doesn't stay. I mean, it's not yeah. like it's going to, I mean, next week it could be all gone. A lot of times if the crop is seeded, those are the best kind of soils oh, to get. They're, and they're sopping wet. They're full of moisture, and that's what you need. But not in a you know in an excess precipitation year. I mean, this is mm -hmm. not good news. So what you end up with a lot of standing water. The rivers are full. You have a lot of fields that are you just can't get out there with your machinery because you're just mired in muck. Yeah. And and those are issues, particularly in Manitoba, because of the kind of soils that they have. There. Yeah. So you know, I mean, you can paint a bad news situation, but the prop the thing is. We truly don't know what is going to happen. So we do have a chance. Oh, uh, clearly. I mean, and you know, don't give up yet. Don't give. And you know what I think? I learned this past year. What the resiliency, the strength of growers, you mm -hmm. know, in the West. I mean, look at what they had, on the last, the first day of fall. Mm -hmm. They had, they had already a killing, a deep frost. They had, they were three or four weeks behind schedule. They were being clobbered and brutalized by, by severe weather and, and um, untimely weather. And then on the last, I think it must have been nature must have felt sorry for them. Because from the last first, first day of fall for the next three weeks, they brought in 70% of the crop. Yeah. Uh, it is one of the great stories of Canadian history. Nobody talks about it. But they worked, must have worked morning, noon, and night. Somebody said, well, it was, um, they had lots of Red Bull or something like oh, that. That's a Red so, I mean, but hey, whatever Everybody they had, was amped up. they were. And they brought it in, and they got it in. And, you know, I mean, it really is. It shows you that don't give up. Uh, uh, don't call. Uh, it's, the ball game's not over until the fat lady sings. And the fat lady didn't sing until the end of October. And so they were able to, to field their crop or their harvest in, in this year rather than the next year, which everybody thought. Mm -hmm. So uh, my sense is that, hey, it's not necessarily looking good, but my gosh, there, is, there are ways that things uh, uh, turn around and, uh, and, and, um, and nobody knows what that next storm system around the horizon means. So what are your models saying for summertime? Uh, for the, um, uh, the summer right now, it's quite variable. Um, I think it's certainly, I always say this, and I've been right several times by saying this, it's a bit, it's not looking at the models, it's saying, one thing I do know, and I would bet a good amount of money on the fact it won't be as wet as it was last year. Of course, that's like saying tonight's going to be dark Thanks. and tomorrow's <laughs> going to be light. But but no, I mean that that is uh, and and but my sense is that it will be uh, typically what you see after La Nina is that um, it's a slow beginning, but then it really warms up and it turns to be, it tends to be a little on the dry side. So I bet a few more loonies on the fact that what we might see is clearly a warmer summer, a warmer growing season. 
and clearly a lot less uh, precipitation. But the hurdle will be getting over the spring, mm -hmm. getting over that, that flood season, which already the U.S. Weather Service has said there's problems in the northern and the upper reaches of the Red River. It's not so. We had last year terrible floods in, in uh, Dakotas, mm -hmm. nothing in Manitoba because they had less snow and they, the snow melt went very easy. There was, no, there was not a lot of ice. They could break up the ice. And so we're, we're being able to kind of not control the weather, but manage it a little bit more by things like that, you say. But um, hey, there will always be jobs for climatologists because we'll always have a hard time figuring out what the weather's going to be. So what, what's causing this variability? Is it, the, somebody told me the sun's cooling, uh, or is it, uh, is it, you know, uh, ozone layer stuff. Like, what is what? What's the reason? Are we just in a cycle where this happens? This year, I mean, what we're seeing, why we're seeing snow on the prairies, in spite of the fact that you're hearing about climate change and global warming, is because it's about the the ocean patterns and the circulation this winter, not over the last five or ten winters. Do you say? Mm. So, um, you know, I mean, if you take a look at Calgary, for example, and this is why I'm so hyped up on things like La Nina and El Nino. If you look at Calgary in the last 60 years, there have been um, 19 La Ninas, okay? In those 19, there have been um, 15 of those have been colder than normal and four have been warmer. So Sean, what that tells you is no guarantee. Mm -hmm. You know, if you bet your life savings on it, you could lose it, you say. But if you bet enough over time, you're gonna win with La Nina. It also means that in fact for um, those 19, um, I think there were 13 winters that were snowier and six that were, dry, were less than normal. So again, it tells you that sometimes when you have these events, the, the atmosphere behaves in a predictable way. These La Ninas, they have their, their cousins or their sisters, the same pattern develops, you say. And you know, for agriculture, and probably a better example is elsewhere, is that when farmers in Peru and Ecuador know about La Nina and El Nino, and we can't get them, we don't know when they're going to start, but once they start, we know that we have a good sense that they're going to stay for at least a year. And so farmers there will, will grow cotton or rice, depending upon whether it's the El Nino or La Nina, and they win all the time because the signal there is much more, even more skillful than it is in Canada. Mm. And similarly in, in, in Brazil, I mean, they knew that it was going to be a, a wet situation. It's been wet. It's been wet, exactly. And they, we told them it was going to be wet. I mean, we told Australia. Australia last year with El Nino, had, they had drought like they'd never seen before. This year they've had record floods because of La Nina. So there is this optimism, you say, yeah. that we're going to be able to get this right, you know. Um, it's just that Canada is so removed from these tropical oceans that the signal is not always so obvious to us. But um, we're learning, um, and I think the real challenge for climatologists and, and agronomists and agriculture meteorologists is to, is to do more, looking more at the past to, to give us a sense of what the future is going to be. Cool. Thanks a lot, Dave. We'll talk okay. to you again soon. Great job.